Hi guys and welcome back. Today's piece is going to be an original watercolor piece so we can go ahead and just jump right in. So at the beginning here I'm using a sketch that is actually printed off of my computer and this is from a process that I've used a few times and I am absolutely in love with it. This is the way that works best for me. But what I do is I start off for my finished pieces like this. I'll start off doing thumbnails traditionally. I find that I can get a lot of energy and my ideas down very quickly and that kind of a in that medium, when I'm using just my sketchbook and a color erase pencil is what I used for this one. And I was working very small. This was originally, I think like a two inch by three inch thumbnail. So very small. And when I was sketching it out, I got her face and the shape of her hair and everything in one. And then I realized I wanted to draw her hand in there. So I did a quick hand below it in the pose that I wanted. That way I didn't have to erase it and put it into that thumbnail. And then I just took a photograph and I took it into Photoshop and I just tweaked it and I stuck that hand into the main part of the sketch, that thumbnail, and I made it fit to the size that I was actually going to work on. And then I went in and did a much more refined sketch on top of it. This is my favorite way to do it because it means that I can have that same energy that I can get from my quick thumbnails when I'm working traditionally like that, but I have the ability to be as refined as I want to and I can change the position of things like I did with this hand and I can reformat things. I can really just have a lot of control over it in a way that if I was sketching traditionally the entirety of it, I would not be able to control as much because there's only so much that paper can take. So this is my favorite way. It's the most streamlined for me to be able to create good sketches that I feel like I've done everything that I want to and can do so that when I work on the final piece, I feel completely prepared for it. And today for the line work, I am just using my Micron pens. I love using these. They are definitely watertight once you use them. They're not going to dissolve within the water when you're using watercolor. You just have to let it dry all the way out. And I actually really like almost this dry look that I get on this cold press paper because it's so textured. It means that if I do a very light hand, it becomes very spotted and a textured line. And I love that look. I feel like it kind of reminds me of a more old approach to it, like old illustrations. So I, I really like that and that I was able to achieve that kind of a look with this. And as you can see, I did use the light box. So I printed off the digital sketch, the finished up refined version of it. And then I just printed it off and then I'm using a light box to transfer it onto my final paper. And the next step that I did is actually misc it. So that's that orange paint type stuff that I put on there. It is great. It keeps the paint from sinking into the paper where that is put. It will repel it so that I can go in there and do these really nice washes in the background without needing to worry about very carefully outlining her every time. And I chose to do it with this one. I usually end up skipping misc it, but I wanted to get her very clean edged and I knew that I wanted to do a lot of layers to build up the color in the background. So I figured now was a great time as any. Um, but the big thing that is a negative for me is that when you use Miskit, and I've done this before, but if you use Miskit and use a heat gun like I do to dry out your watercolor so you can work on the next, the next layer, it can stain your paper an orange color. And luckily last time it happened, it was in an area that I was going to paint yellow anyway. So it was actually easy to hide and it is very faint, but I did not want that to happen to this piece. So I actually ended up having to do it a very old fashioned way where I just had to sit there and wait for each layer to dry. And I think I did maybe three layers on the background and that was the longest time ever. It is just so frustrating to sit there and feel ready to paint and have to sit there and wait and wait and wait for it to dry. So I, I forgot how long you have to sit there and wait for things to dry when you don't have a heat gun. So I would definitely recommend if any of you use watercolor and don't have a heat gun or a blow dryer or anything like that, I would suggest getting one because I did not realize how incredibly tedious and time consuming it can be when you don't have something to speed up that drying process time. And I did actually end up cutting out the part where I did several color palettes to get an idea of how I wanted to paint this one. But I did choose that I wanted it to be very cool toned. So I went in and I wanted her hair to be gray and the background to have this blue and purple shift to it. But I noticed that the thing that happens a lot when I'm doing these color comps is that I'm doing 
a single layer of the color that I generally want it to be. So when I'm doing the final version, the finals end up being a lot darker because I add several layers on top of that to reach the shadows and to get depth into those colors. So that's one thing that I think that I can improve on my process a little bit more is to try to emulate that in my color comps a little bit better. I need to layer some more colors that I think I'm going to use for the shadows because that's a very important thing to figure out anyways, but being able to layer that and then get it to a value that it would actually end up in an actual finished piece would be very helpful. Overall, this piece ended up a lot darker than I initially planned, but I am actually really happy about it because the initial thought was that I wanted it to be kind of pastel, but it ended up getting pushed in a direction where some of the elements that I was going to keep a lighter color, once I got it working into the final version, I decided to make it a much darker color and I loved that look. I loved having very light areas with the contrast of the very dark colors. And her face is actually a pretty good example of this. When I first did the sketch, I loved her expression and it had a little bit of more of a softer, serene look to it. And then the inked version, I ended up adding a few details, I think, that were just a little bit heavier. And I think that the shape of her eye changed a little bit and the placement of their pupils, it was really subtle changes but it ended up giving her a little bit of a heavier expression and it, it made her expression a little bit weirder than I necessarily wanted. And I wanted to be very careful with the way that I treated this because this is the kind of thing where many times I would jump into one solution to try to fix something and then it ends up much worse than the original very small problem. And I don't think this was necessarily a problem per se. It just was a little bit different than I had imagined, but it ended up being that the solution to that, to fixing her face so that it had more of its own character rather than trying to emulate it to be more like my sketch was that I pushed it more into a heavier look. So I darkened her lips much more than I anticipated. And that allowed me to fill in her lip shape so that it was a little bit closer to what I wanted rather than it being a little bit off in the way that it was. And once I did that, the heaviness in the line work on her eyes themselves, I think that they looked a little bit more like it was eyeliner and makeup rather than a heaviness. So I feel like they paired well together. And then I did keep her eyes a very cool, almost clear blue color. And that really balanced out that reddish purple in her lips. So overall adding that darker element in her lips balanced out some of the areas in her face. So I was really happy with how that ended up turning out. And I did darken her eyebrows as well to give it that balancing contrast between having her dark lips and her dark eyebrows. And then I just went in and added this blotchy darkness around some of these lighter shapes. This is an area that I actually end up going in and filling those extra circles in as very, very dark, but I left the moon, that main large shape as white. And the reason that I did that is that once I was looking at the whole of it, those white areas were taking too much contrast. They were drawing the eye to that specifically over the main orb that I wanted you to look at. So by darkening those, it made it so that they were the other circles and the moon. It wasn't the moon and a bunch of small, but eye catching circles that were all the same value. So I wanted that duality of it. I wanted one to take your eyes there. And I do end up darkening overall her hair so that it is more of a black rather than a gray, like I originally thought. And the reason that I did that was because the contrast between her and the background was just a little bit too close. They were a little bit too much of the same value. So she wasn't standing out quite enough. So that's when I chose to darken her hair and darken those circles. And that's really what pushed this piece into much of a darker range. And I really loved it. It definitely felt a little bit more like the space look to it. It had more darkness to it and more contrast. And I liked that. And then for my final step, I did this white thin outline around her. This part was kind of nerve wracking because it is white ink, so it isn't water soluble. So I can't go in there and use water to clean up some of the edges or anything like that. And unlike black, I feel like it's harder to get a very sharp edge because this ink actually is not very opaque. So if any of you guys have any suggestions for a very opaque white ink, I would love to hear it because I've always hated that about this ink is that it is not opaque. I have to either layer it or deal with it being kind of transparent and splotchy. So, so that was kind of the, the nerve wracking moment where I had to make sure that it was 
as sharp and clean as possible so that it would get the effect that I wanted. I did end up going in after it dried with my Micron pen to clean up the interior edges of that white line where I had covered up some of the black border a little bit too much. But overall, I really liked that element, the white border. I feel like it really made her pop from the background in the way that I wanted it to, but also it mimicked the lightness in the moon and her star crown. So I felt like it, it had a place within this piece. And that's it for today's piece. This was one that definitely turned into one of my favorite pieces as of late, since it was a lot more in tune with the stuff that I find very inspiring. So I might have to do a little bit more like space type themes like this, but I will have prints available of her. So I will have the prints as well as the original actually. So if you wanted to own her in any form, I'll have a link down in the description as well as in the end card that'll happen in just a few seconds. But yeah, I have her and lots of other prints and buttons if you wanna check that out. And I do post every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you haven't yet, hit subscribe. And if you are subscribed and you haven't hit that bell yet, click that and you'll be able to get notifications on when exactly I post. And like I said, that's everything for today. So I will see you guys at my next video.